What is up, everybody? Sir Flex is here, bringing you guys another replay cast. This time around, we're following Jesha. Jesha? Jesh? <laughs> in the Object 263 here on Sacred Valley in extremely good matchmaking, where we are the top dogs at tier 10. Then there's five tier 9s, and then there's a couple of XP bags at tier 8, which is pretty much the best matchmaking you can have in your tier 10. And it seems like you get this matchmaking even more after the amazing matchmaking improvements but yeah anyway enough about the matchmaking we all know it's crap uh so why the object 263 well the 263 is a bit controversial a little, a little bit right now because currently you don't see too many of them and they're a little bit niche let's say and um they are they are subject on the super test or even before the super test do some changes and this might be a tier 9 at some point and then the tier 8 is going to be a tier 7 and then i think the tier 7 is going to go away which is a damn shame because the tier 7 is awesome and so is this thing actually it's not too bad at all it's a little bit awkward having no turret but having 550 alpha 290 pen on a short reload and 330 pen on apcr is pretty damn good now the obvious weakness here is having no turrets and also not having a lot of gun traverse as we try and go for the lower plate actually hits them in the tracks there so you get a little bit of assistance there and now the next shot oh that actually was as good rg because it went top right instead of where he aimed it that was interesting but as you can see the dpm is just absolutely lethal and it has like a kind of like a niche gun there's not too many 550 130 mil TDs out there. As a matter of fact, I think this might be the only one, as far as I know. So um, they're replacing this with some Object Four or something, which has the the, the 750 Alpha again, and it's extremely boring. And more, it also has more armor and stuff like that. But I think it's also slower. And this thing, as you can see, once you get into some good positions, this thing shreds still. And yeah, it's not probably not the best TD in tier 10. But at least it's a totally different flavor, right? There's nothing at tier 10 that is like this. There's a lot of tier 10s that are, you know, very similar because of the alpha. So you either have the Death Stars with the 1000 alpha, or you have everybody else with 750 alpha, and then there's this guy with 550. And, you know, I always thought it was quite nifty. Obviously, artillery will shit on you because of the open <clears throat> and the fact that it's open. And uh, frontally, it actually has really good armor, but the lower plate is weak and also pretty big, as you can see. And there's also some weak spots here if you shoot inside the gun, but that's always a bit awkward. Anyway, so, you know, I would love to hear what you guys thought. I I'll, I'll put up a, a daily bounce link um, down below so you guys can see. So we're, I don't know why we we're auto-aiming at an SGRV. We already got 3,000 damage, by the way. In about three three minutes, and some excellent early game positioning. And let's see what we're gonna do here. And it's looking pretty good for the team. I mean, the outer flank has died off totally, and there's some tier eights fighting there. But you know, this this base, the south base, is actually uh, decent decent to uh, to defend if you really need to. So. Jeshan's had enough of his teammates not winning this flank yet, so I'm gonna we're gonna help them out a little bit. Still have the deck pets as well. It has we can high roll that actually. Let's see what we can do. Roll right in front. Oh shit! And we get the sli slightly high roll, but thank God the deck pets are missed. Cause that would have been pretty awful. I7, nice into the side, get the tracking as well. And this is always very nice, because because of the shitty lower plates, you want to actually face hug things. Like, even an I7, you want to face hug. Because if they can only shoot the upper plates here, and even these spots here, your armor is pretty, pretty damn good for a tier 10 TD. It is just literally the lower plate, and the fact that, you know, you have the gun in the back, so if you're going to go around corners, you know, this will be exposed. So it's a bit awkward to drive, but... Nonetheless, you know, at least it's different, you know? I, I don't feel like every tier 10 needs to be OP OP with a lot of armor in the same 750 gun, you know what I mean? I don't want another, like, another clone like that. I think this is actually really cool, so I'm really, really wondering what they're gonna do, because the, the, the 
preliminary stats or whatever you want to call it. Butcher my English. The stats so far that they're testing out on the tier on the tier uh, nine and ten. Uh, sorry, the tier nine and eight, and this is gonna be a tier nine. Is that they're basically butchering everything I like about these tanks. They're butchering the maneuverability, butchering the DPM, and just giving it a little bit more armor, which to me is just very, very bland, because actually I quite like the SG-122-54, for example. But yeah, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on it, and you know, I don't really play the 216 that much. I think I have maybe a couple of replays, like one or two on my own channel with some highlights of it. And yeah, it can be pretty frustrating, but I just like the fact that it's different, you know? But enough about the tech tree, because it's going to get close now. Uh, we're actually kind of losing at this point. RT takes out the I-7 as well. And there's a T-49, there's a CDC, enough targets, and we're on our own here. Obviously not spotted. Take a little bit of time to, to aim that one. CDC spots us now. He's like, oh, let me just spend this guy real quick, obviously. You gotta have to literally hit that lower plate. And shooting down on the lower plate makes it more effective, of course, so... The CDC having a higher precision, that's going to make that lower plate even a pretty tough bend for a CDC. And the CDC has such trash, trash gun handling that he's going to be okay. Oh, I like that move. So he sees the T-49 and he keeps moving. A lot of people will instantly turn into the T-49. But actually, I like that move. I mean, you do kind of risk the side pen if he has the big gun. And it seems like he does. Yeah. Oh, the T-54 got hit by artillery. About 202 was about the T-49. And I think I just heard him fire, so the T-49 should be dead, but to the hands of the T-54. But like I said, I like that he just drove right past, because, you know, he was probably not looking at him. He wasn't, you know, spotted as he went in there. And he was just instantly safe, instead of, you know, awkwardly turning, maybe getting shot in the face. So I like that move. That was good. T-49. Now we also heard a shot behind us. And I hope Jesha picks up, picked up on that. We actually heard a shot behind us. And that's, of course, the Yachtiger Scorpion are still likely up there. Yep, gets spotting again. So the Yachtiger is probably still around the spot that he was last spotted in, which is quite an old spot, but likely still there. He's just waiting for his camo to return. Again, a move I quite like, and you can obviously see that he's doing that. Scorpion gets spotted not around here, so that means that the Yachtiger is probably on his own I mean I mean in all fairness he is on his own because there's no one else except artillery you spotted right now so I'm thinking Jesha knows this this is a really awkward fight because both these things actually match up against each other quite well as we go in angle but he actually hits the engine deck shooting down upon it and this again I like I like the fact that he's doing this but I'm wondering if the yak tag can oh no see he actually cannot shoot down on him because for some reason bumping into him gave him that gave him a little bit of frontal armor as you can see this is just super annoying and this is what you want to do so he bounced two shots only took the first one because a little bit of rg honestly shooting down into the engine deck there but that's what you want to do in these two six threes and again it is slightly awkward to do it because i'm pretty sure you can pen into into these sites for example, that next to the gun, but as you can see, it also bounced there, so... It's just, uh, you know, you 9 out of 10 times, that's gonna work out for you, right? Uh, so now, I guess we load some APCR for the end game. I think that's absolutely fine, especially for the Panzer 7. And then there's the SRV as well. It doesn't, obviously doesn't need, for, need it for the SRV, because with 130 mil, we're just gonna overmatch the, uh, the, the, uh, the Swedish cheese wedge. So that shouldn't be a problem. But, you know, I can see why you want to load some APCR now. We've done 7,419 damage. These guys are on a lot of health. And then there's also still artillery. So let's see what's happening. So the E5 is there. T54 is backing him up a little bit. So they can't just push the E5. I like that. But I also like what Justin's doing. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to go head on to people. And that's what I, even I make that mistake a lot. You're so in the moment and you, you forget that you can actually move around the map a little bit, even in these vehicles. That, you know, in scouts and stuff, I kind of do that naturally. But once I'm in a vehicle that goes a little bit slower than that, I tend to forget that you could literally just relocate. 
And then, you know, like I said, I find myself doing that as well. Now the Panzer 7. Really good positioning here. Aim for the lower plate. Still bounced. The lower plate nothing is, is, you know, somewhat of a weak spot. But at the same time, it's still really good. So, there we go. 501. Like I said, he has a lot of health. I like what he's doing here as well. Using this hill to keep his, most of his tank covered. There we go. Another bounce. Actually on the move shot by the Panzer 7 there. Oh, yeah, cheese wedge, 611. As you can see, the DPM is just so nice. 130 mil guns are probably some of my favorite, um, uh, you know, caliber of gun in this game. Oh, the Panzer 7 went to HE, and we pen them in the side. If you want to pen the, pen the Panzer 7s, by the way, their turret actually sticks out. And now he gets the easy shot as the TPT4 went ham. RT hits us 500. Like I said, it's quite vulnerable to artillery. Um, because of the back pocket is open. If you get shot in there, and you're pretty much done for. But we still have all our consumables, and we did almost 10,000 damage. Something I have never reached, actually. I think my record is 9,800. With, like, a really weird shit barn game, when it was still shit. <laughs> so, oh my god, he's, he's pretty excited. 10k damage, hell yeah. And now we still have artillery. And will we get the 8th kill as well? Didn't even notice... My god, we were already on 7 kills. <laughs> we just killed 8 people and did over 10,000 damage in a tank that you don't see that often. And therefore is probably subject to some changes soon. In, I'd say, a couple of months still ahead of us. But still. <clears throat> so, yeah, the Object 263. I would love to know what you guys think of the current tank. And I would love to know what you guys think about the changes that are coming to it. And also, well, just, just to make things clear about what we did in this replay, let's take a quick look here. 10,000 damage, 8 kills, 1,500 basic speed at tier 10. Uh, we obviously got the Bradley Walters, 15 bonds, well. Who's surprised that it's an ace? I'm not. Um, obviously, we shot away some uh, premium ammo, and we used food as well. <clears throat> Oh my god, I had to cough there. Holy shit. So we made 36k. Let's just do it live, fuck it. And yeah, overall, really, really good score. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. If you like the, the this kind of stuff, don't forget you can upload your replays to zircon.whatrecord.com. And, um, you know, if you like this video, maybe check out some more. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.